Okay, so um, at the monitor, I've just powered it on, and yep, there's the screen just going to appear. Hope the grub menu's come up. And try and resync this. There it is. So we've got LFS 12.1, 64 bit mode. So I'll press enter there rather than wait half a minute. And there it is booting and it's booted it successfully, which is more or less what you'd expect being as it's automated. It would only be configuration that would have gone wrong possibly and maybe stuff in the kernel. Well, there's GPM working. I can move the cursor around with the mouse and highlight stuff. So that's working fine. Let's log in as root. GU name minus A. And oh yeah, I can see this font is slightly different. The L looks a little bit weird. Um, but yeah, the LFS 12.1 is the host name and the version 6.74 with the suffix that I've put in. And you can see it's built today as well, July the 3rd. And also that it's 64-bit uh, there. Um, so I'm quickly going to test, well, by way of testing using Vi to modify the um, font uh, just put it back to how I'm used to, which is using Latin 1-16. So that all works fine. Um, if I do, well, we should have CPU ID now, I hope. We haven't. Okay, that must be its own package. I thought it was part of um, Utils Linux or Core Utils for some reason. I don't know why. Um, okay, so let's look at proc. CPU info and yeah once again there you can see all the processor details and we can do free see the got access to all the memory and top shows all the processes running as well so that looks all good um, I'm going to try and SSH into my server. And it's asking me about the signature. So obviously I should check that normally. I don't even recognize it, even though I connect to, to it so many times. Um, so yeah, it looks, looks okay anyway. And type in password. And so I'm in. So now I'm going to come back in to this machine. So it's only the root user. So once again, the um, host identification has failed because the um, SSH key is different on this particular instance of this boot. So I need to edit my SSH known host file and just remove that entry for E7500. Reconnect and yes, it's asking me now. And I'm back in again. So um, if I do you know, I say you can see the details are the same again, even though I've come in from the current attack. So I'm going in and coming back around again, back onto this machine. So that looks like that's working all right. So now let's try accessing the server, uh, the web server that is. Uh, okay, I got this wrong last time, didn't I? Get it to Yep, that's it there. So if I go into LFS 12.1, there's all the files that were there before. So that looks all right. Um, and I guess I could try and fetch a file. Um, LFS-12.1 forward slash uh, md5 sums for example let's fetch that straight away 
Uh, looks like I've got some spurious characters there, but that might be the font, possibly. Um, I've never seen that before. So let's have a look at MD5 Sum, see what we've got in there. And it looks like the modern Lynx is not... Oh, no, sorry, that was WGET, wasn't it? Yeah, it's the Lynx that seems to leave the um, HTTP header in. But that's obviously downloaded OK. Um, let me try links actually see what happens when I download that so I press D to download save the disk uh, yes I'll overwrite it quit yep oh no so yeah it's, it's obviously a link setting so the the new links has got a setting where it's not downloading the header files on text files. So that's interesting. It's the first time I've seen it behave as expected. So wget works, ssh works, um, links works. Um, so the last thing I'm going to do is to take a look at the results of the tests that were run. So I need to go into jhalfs into the tests, test logs. And if we look at this, you'll see that all the files are the same size and that's because they're, they're empty. I think they might just have a date and timestamp in there. Yeah, it's just a, it's probably the time it was, the file was created. Um, but if we go back, we can see there's certain files that aren't 29 bytes long. And that's because they've actually got test results in. So it's only done the tests on the um, tool chain. And also interesting, you can see the uh, user ID of the LFS user when it's creating the initial stage. And then, um, as you know, with the LFS book, you become root to create the final system. So, so you can see we've got glibc there and binutils. GMP, MPFR, and GCC. So let's have a look at the first one, GWC, which is 803. Uh, this might be used to use via 803. Press tab to complete it. And if we look for fail, there's the first match IO test Elch mod. That's a standard failure. It's been there for quite a while. So that's okay. Um, the other ones I had, yeah, Test Affinity, P3, P32, and Shed, they're also known about and mentioned in the book as well, so they're fine. So that's a good test, uh, good, yeah, good test result. Four failures, which are known about, they're mentioned in the books, so that's all good. So that's probably one of the most critical um, tests that we run, it's the core library, so that's good. Um, the next one we need to look at is bin utils. So that one is 817 bin utils. And this one's a little bit more awkward to look at. So I think we can do fail, is it? Yeah, there's weak undef test. Um, yeah, basically, that's right. Um, all the failures are within, are within the gold test suite, which is the part that we're in. So there's one there. Um, there's two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. Incremental test five. After that, there's no more failures. So again, that's mentioned in the book. There's twelve failures. Um, so once again. That is a good, there they all there, all of them. That's a good test result as well. Next we've got um, GMP818, uh, that one is. And is it a fail we look for? Yeah. So there's no failures there. Let's keep on looking for fail. In fact, let's see if we can look for a space fail. So we don't keep looking for the X fail, the expected failures, or unexpected, yeah, expected failures, sorry. So that's okay, that's okay, that's okay. You can see each time I search for failed, 
the result is zero. I've gone back to the top, so that is a complete success. That's what we'd expect. Now let's look at MPFR, which is 819. And let's see if we can search for fail again. Yeah, I think this is the only result on this. You can see a total of 198 tests, all have passed, so therefore there's no failures. And yeah, that is the end. That is the only place that fail appears. So MPFR is all good as well. And the final one we've got to check is GCC, which is 826. And we'll look for fail there. Um, so what's this part? Oh, this is just the initial setup, the looks of it. Let's look for the summary. It's probably the best thing to do. So there's two unexpected failures here. Let's go back and have a look at them. So there they are there. Is that them there? What does it say in the summary? Look, it actually says right. What I'm going to do might be easier is I'll copy the command that the book uses to tell us to get the summary, which is probably the easiest way to view this. Um, so I'll have to crib this off with another screen. Right, yeah, so it's... Um, So let's do cat, pipe that through, grip, minus a7, sum. Let's put that through less. All right, this doesn't actually show us the failures, unfortunately, because we're not running the test summary script or program. Okay, let's try and fathom out what's gone on then. Let's look for fail. No. Right. Data model. Um, so, right, okay, yeah, it says that eight tests. Um, seven of which are in the analyzer directory known to fail. So we've got one there. There's two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that's those accounted for. That one as well is the other one that's mentioned. So that's the eight, PR56837. So that's those eight for the GCC tests. Then we've got these vect ones. Yeah, there's five of them, which are also mentioned in the book, uh, I think. Yeah, so it says several tests in the vect directory are known to fail if the hardware does not support AVX. Well, I'm pretty certain that this hardware doesn't support AVX. Let's quickly check that. 
So cat proc CPU info grip EVX. Yep, there's nothing there, so it definitely doesn't support it. So that's why we've got these failures. So there's one, two, three, four, five failures there for the VECT. Then we've got the ASAN tests, the address sanitizer, 14 of those are known to fail within G++, which is where we are. So there's one there, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. 11, 12, 13, 14. We've got a few more by the looks of it. Oh, right, okay, they've actually counted these slightly differently. So although these are ASAN tests, they've actually named them as interception malloc test one, and there should be seven of them. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that's correct. And then 14 address sanitizer. Yeah, that's these ones. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. So that's correct. So let's see what else we've got. Bad mapper. Now this one didn't get a mention in the book, but it's an exact replica of what I experienced when I tested this. Um, I've got six of these. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six. So whether that's because I've come from LFS 8.2 or whatever, whether it's because I've automatically built, I don't know, or kernel settings, I don't know. Um, but at least I've got some consistency. Um, what that's about, I don't know. Um, but it's only a handful of tests again. And as it, as it says in the book, um, there's been 185, over 185,000 tests. So five is not a, a fantastic deal. Um, obviously, if this was an important thing, um, I might investigate that. Um, so let's see what else we've got. Copy.cc, that gets a mention in the book. Um, as part of the uh, tests, so that's okay. Um, and I think that should be it. So there's a summary of it again, of all the tests failed in G, G++, so 27 in total. And there's a summary of the GCC tests that failed. So we know about them already. And the VECT ones, the summary, the copy CC one again, and that's it. So um, the only ones that aren't mentioned in the book are bad mapper, but as I said, I did get them in my test. So it shows that I, th I think that's a pretty good build. Um, it's something I, I would carry on and use. I wouldn't be particularly concerned about that. So that brings a close to this series about upgrading LFS 8.2 to LFS 12.1 and indeed the complete series um, of building well what initially was planned to be just um, an in interesting uh, journey into building the original Linux from scratch it's turned into building them throughout the years um, in the 25 years that Linux and Scratch has been around for. Um, so yeah, as, as I've said before in the early videos, it celebrates its 25th birthday this December when the first um, release was published. Um, it's been quite interesting for me. I hope you found it interesting uh, to see how LFS has evolved over the years and how it's sort of stabilized a lot more and it's become a what I consider to be a, a professional dist distribution. It's um, very robust now to build it there's a great deal of work that's been done by the team and i certainly appreciate it um i hope you've found the videos interesting give me a thumbs up on the videos if you have found them interesting subscribe to my channel uh, if you want to see more of the same sort of stuff that i'll be doing in the future thanks very much for watching goodbye